On a busy Friday night, a group ran up a more than $300 bill here at Davenport's Ale House and they never paid it. These dine and dash crimes not only hurt the restaurants themselves, they leave the servers without the tips they rely on. You try to trust customers, you know, but it's like in any, any other industry. People who try to do wrong. Surveillance video from January 28th shows the group of 14 adults and kids enjoying the night at Davenport's Ale House, shooting hoops, ordering up food and drinks. They were, you know, eating, no, no complaints, everything was going well. But when it came time to pay the $320 tab, one by one, they trickled out. And the server went to go and get the checks, go and get some to-go boxes, and well, what we noticed was you know, a few went outside to the car, a couple went to the bathroom, and then they all basically made a run for the door. But not without grabbing their to-go boxes. Fourteen people just get up and wander out. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? It's no petty crime. In Florida, a dine and dash over $300 is a third degree felony, punishable by up to five years in prison and a $5,000 fine. When we find you, and we will, you are going to the Polk County Jail for a free meal. And we're not even going to ask you to pay for it. It won't be delicious like it was at the L House. That's a guarantee. For a restaurant that survived the pandemic, the restrictions and inflated food prices. You know, we're a family owned restaurant. It's an unnecessary blow. Obviously, the restaurant has to eat the cost. I felt bad for the server because obviously that, the tip is what they work for. Um, but. Sadly, it happens in this industry. It happens a lot. So Davenport's Ale House has made policy changes, especially for groups. If it's a big group, try to get a credit card to kind of hold. No, we're not charging it. We're just going to hold it to kind of cover ourselves. If you recognize any of the faces in that video, Crime Stop. It's like we're living in some sort of parallel world. For starters, they saw that kid in the back with the ski mask on in Florida. And they didn't expect for them to get robbed. In Florida, if your customer is wearing one of those, you kind of have to already expect for them to not be there to pay. Now, on a more serious note, why the fuck did they get Deputy Judd or our local sheriff to go talk about this? Like, really? Are you kidding me? We needed... A uh, deputy sh or sheriff uh, Judd to go out there and threaten the adults of this party into turning themselves in because they're they're about to do some hard time in the local in the local uh, Polk County Sheriff's Department uh, cafeteria. Hearing Grady Judd make a bunch of threats or make a bunch of statements that are meant to be shameful is one of the most pitiful things that you can possibly find on the internet. Even such a petty crime as $320 stolen from a restaurant is turned into a grand spectacle. Now, if you thought that the first crime wasn't a crime, wait until you get a load of this one. Saying that we used to say, and so I go, who do you think they said it to? The event sparked students at Farmington and nearby North Farmington High to walk out of their schools Thursday afternoon and protest of this incident and to support the student. No justice! No and we're tired of injustice. We're tired of having to face this in our school. We're supposed to come to learn. We're done with it. Yeah, you got you got you got to stand up for what's right, and you can't just can't let that slide. My parents are really upset about this. Parents were also upset by the incident. It's hurtful that something like that is still going on. I'm so sorry it's happening. It's intolerable, especially in 2022. The superintendent of the school district also responding. The administration immediately addressed the situation and removed that uh, that substitute uh, teacher um, and, and, and worked with their contracted service to make sure that she's not back. In fact, this substitute teacher is no longer allowed to teach anywhere in the district. The superintendent also applauded the victim in this incident for immediately going to staff members who deal with conflict. Well, that's a real testament to the relationships. We now, we all know that up north and down south, they have different vernac vernaculars. So words up north may sound foreign 
to people from down south. Like, Wooski. What the fuck is a Wooski? Or a pop. What the fuck is a pop? You mean a soda? A fountain drink? With that being said, what I'm about to say may come as a surprise. Now, I understand that there's a, a current movement or narrative being pushed forward by some of our Africans and even some of our whites. That there's a whole lot of racism that's still uh, being perpetuated to this day. Now, I'm not even trying to say that this case was definitively not racist, but I will in def- speak in defense of this substitute teacher. Now, we don't know where she was from, but I can tell you where I'm from. I'm from Florida, the most southern state. Now, here's what I need you to acknowledge. Cotton picking is an uh, uh, an old thing that they used to force slaves to do. But the the phrase cotton picking is actually used by a lot of elderly black folk in Florida. Now, cotton picking is more used as an exasperated term. Like, oh, that cotton picking dog bit me. Or, if you don't get your cotton picking tail back into that uh, playroom and wait for me to get th- get through cooking. Or, you know, just any anything like that. Now, that's elderly black people saying that. So, if I were to say, Grandma, you can't say that. That's so racist. You're you're being racist towards me. How would that sound? Let me just ask you that. How would it sound if I was calling my own grandma racist for directing the word cotton picking towards me? I think that um, there's definitely the use of the word in a negative connotation, but you also have to acknowledge that in the way that the teacher used it, it could have been in a non-negative way, especially if the sub is an older person from the South. Um, I will continue to hear people use the word, the term cotton picking, and I will continue to probably use it myself with no regard for the fact that it was originally racist. Um, now I'm not trying to defend this teacher, but I am trying to point out the fact that this whole lynch mob running down, running down the streets, rolling with the story without actually taking a single second of your own time to, to think rationally or reasonably is what's causing this turmoil and everything to go downhill. So I think that taking up arms and marching and trying to act as if it's bigger than it is is definitely a part of the problem because there's definitely a chance that this was not racist at all. So those are two um, wacky crimes or wacky things being covered on the news, but this next one's really about to get... Last one. Some insurance companies are known for their mascots. NJM is known for outstanding service you can count on. In other news tonight, in South Jersey, three women are facing charges for a disturbing crime. Police say they used an electric shock collar on a 13-year-old girl in their home. Action News reporter Trish Hartman is live outside of the Stratford Police Department tonight with the full story. Trish. Rick, this story is just heartbreaking. Authorities say a 13 year old girl was abused and neglected and accused the suspects of forcing her to wear a shock collar meant for a dog around her neck. Karen Vilek says it was Tuesday afternoon when she heard her doorbell ring repeatedly. I open the door and she hands me this dog collar and I go, is your dog loose? She said, no, it, it, they shocked me, they shocked me. And she put up her neck and she, I saw the two marks from the dog collar. Karen says she brought her inside her home in the 100 block of Harvard Avenue in Stratford. She tried to comfort the 13 year old while her husband called 911. I was horrified. My husband and I haven't been able to sleep for days on end. Yeah, so that last story was most definitely 
horrific and um, terrible. As a kid, I definitely got beat. Like spankings, like, oh, uh, I'm a bad kid now. You know, I did something bad. I gotta get punished for it. And I don't think that that is necessarily wrong. But there's actually a vast majority of people who want to say that putting your hands on your children is never something that you should do. Now, there's some people who actually feel the same way about animals. And now, this story uh, begs the question by combining the two. Is there a happy median? Now, an electric collar, we all know, is not actually delivering high voltage enough to uh, be damaging. But it's definitely annoying, and it's definitely significant enough to make an animal or a living thing be able to recognize boundaries. Now, I, I by no means am I saying they should have done what they did, but is did they try to find the happy median like by giving her this collar she was acting out or are they being cruel or were they being lenient because would you rather be beat or would you rather get some electric shocks i really don't know now in this situation specifically, I think it's absolutely horrible, appalling, any of those words, because there's three women that should be perfectly able to discipline a young lady, and they should not need the the help of a caller. Now, um, besides her being traumatized, I wonder how she will reflect on it when she's older. Will she be like, Huh, they were shocking me with the collar. I wish that they had just spanked me instead. Or will she be like, I'm glad I never got spanked. And all I felt was a little shock. Now, I don't know. That's definitely just a question for for years from now when she's much older and she can answer the question. But what about you parents out there? Are you going to be switching to electrotherapy? Or are you going to just keep... um? Uh, wailing on them kids when they get out of hand um that's the end of the video thank you for watching if you made it this far do me a favor and answer this question in the comments do you think that five years for 320 dine and dash makes sense in comparison to two years for killing an endangered species I don't know, it just seems like our justice system will always be very flawed and have some weird juxtaposition and um, parallels that just don't make any sense. Um, this was three weird crimes, uh, and uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed it.